Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick I'm dropping in on you. Um, before I get started, uh, know that we're in the middle of a fundraiser. Uh, if you believe in the work we do, if you follow me for over the last 20 years, you know uh, the last 13, 14, maybe even 15 years online, uh, you know about the work we do. You know the consistency at which we do it. You know the consistency in my message and my work. Uh, we need your support. We need it even more during this time. There are a lot of people who are in need of the wraparound services that we offer and we aren't resourced. So it is what it is. You, If you believe in it, support it. Um, but I'll be honest with you right now. After I finish this, it's probably going to be a bunch of people pissed off at me and mad at me because my people don't like being held accountable. They don't like to be called out. They, as long as you're saying what they want you to say, it's like shares. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Until you start saying things that move against something they may be feeling in a certain way. But you know me. From day one, I told you I wasn't here for likes. Day one, I told you I wasn't here to be popular. Day one, I told you I wasn't here for people to uh, give me the thumbs up and pat me on the back. I was here to bring the truth. I was here to bring it in love. I was here to bring it with a passion and a commitment to standing true and firm on it. Nothing's changed. Uh, and the one thing about being in a situation where you don't get support anyway, I don't have a damn thing to lose. But I'm gonna tell you something. If I had something to lose, I've lost. I've lost cl international clients because of my stand and my commitment and my uh, devotion to speaking the truth unapologetically. And I didn't flinch. And I tell you what, what I'm about to say right now on these two different topics, uh, probably gonna piss some people off, but I'm gonna say it in love. Let's start with this whole India IRE uh, supposedly calling out uh, Meg and Janelle Monet. Let me first start off by saying, while I am not a big fan of today's hip hop circle and what's going on in hip hop music, if you can even call it that, uh, I do have a particular fondness to Meg, number one, from her being from this area, number two, from her being rounded and and showing and revealing more than what you see in her performance and presentation. Uh, Janelle Monet, I think, is gifted, talented, and I'm actually, you know, happy that she's kind of coming out of her shell and being a little bit more in her feminine, sexy self. So get that out of the way. This isn't about being stuck up under the collar and old fogey and all that. This is about something a lot more deeper. Okay, so with that being said, uh, I heard somebody say this, and I agree 100%. Anytime on the internet, Twitter, Facebook, and any of these other blog blogs and everything else that you hear, that was backlash after somebody said something. It's normally not real true backlash. It's a small percentage of a group of people that are intent on being forceful, loud, and disruptive. And the person that they want to shut down has probably actually spoken the truth, at least to some extent, and they don't like it. So their goal is to cancel. We're in the cancel culture. If I don't like what you said, I'm going to cancel. My whole thing is everybody's got a right to say what you say. Let me tell you, first of all, Meg and Janelle Monae have a right to present their form of entertainment the way they want to. And India Ari has a right to sit up and say that she would like to see something different and give her opinion. And we would hope that the two minds of the collective would come together and say, maybe there's somewhere we meet in between. So before I give you my opinion on that, I'm gonna give you context. I'm not one of them people that sit up and say, back in my day, oh my God, y'all are horrible. There's always been raunchiness. There's always been the over the edge, total sexy. We had Millie Jackson, we had Grace Jones, we had a few others. Uh, on, the, on the real dirty side of the male side, we had people like Red Fox. If you heard his album, my, oh my God, Richard Pryor. So 
we've had sexy, we've had Ronja, we've had dirty, we've had vulgar. Okay, so this isn't new. This goes back before I was born. And so I, I grew up, you know, my grandfather was the church deacon and she, he would listen to that Red Fox album and laugh his ass off. So that's not the thing. But here's the thing. Millie Jackson wasn't mainstream. You didn't flip your radio on and hear Millie Jackson's highly suggestive and sometimes outright definitive uh, content. What we've done is we flipped it. The artistry and the beauty of what we're capable of presenting without being overtly sexual in our presentation has gone to the back and everything is about what sells is sex. The problem with that is people naturally will decline in their ability to see your giftedness because all they see is what you're presenting to them. And so I read the statement that NDRE made. What she said is they had a right to do that and she had a right to say what she said she felt it wasn't going to age well and i'm going to tell you as a 56 year old it does not age well it does not age well here's the thing and the problem when millie jackson did it you're going to be hard pressed to go out and just stumble across a millie jackson concert presentation or something you got to go looking for it so you got to know it's there that's not going to be the case for the things we're seeing now. That's going to be readily out there. It's going to be visible. People are going to be talking about it. It's going to be in memes. It's going to be in, in, in uh, shorts. It's going to be in everything else. And you're going to have grandkids. See, I can sit up and tell my kids. That's absolutely ridiculous because they can't go dig up when I was young, dumb, and doing stupid stuff. So my thing isn't that I expect the young folks to be different than we were because we did the same thing. We snuck and read magazines we weren't supposed to do. But that was just it. We had to sneak and do it. It wasn't readily available and presented to us in open form. So my whole thing is, yes, if that's what you're going to do, if that's your type of entertainment that's how you're going to present that's your thing cool and so the thing that may be is india may be talking to the wrong people the artist has chosen who they want to be we should probably be talking to the money people who are deciding how this goes because we as a culture and them as the money behind all of this are determining how mainstream it goes. If there's not a demand for it, it's not out there, you know? And so what we have is something that I really and truly hope that we do better with. And that is caring about who we are and how we are and what we are. Not because we care about what someone else thinks, but because we have a value we value ourselves. And when you value yourselves, you protect and cover yourself. And I'm not talking about clothes. I'm talking about cover yourself. There's a way that you're going to protect yourself. That, and, and, and so my thing is, do does Megan and everybody else uh, that is taking that approach and we act like you know let me let me let me let, let me play devil devil's advocate for me we act like we didn't have foxy brown and lil kim so my whole thing isn't that my whole thing is that was matter of fact millie jackson grace jones foxy brown lil kim had shock value why <clears throat> because you couldn't just pop up it was like whoa what what the hell then all of a sudden, it's expected. It's what it is. <clears throat> so you got now, you got a lot of people with no talent, bearing themselves, getting famous, and dumbing down the art. So it's so many different things that go along with this. <clears throat> uh, do I do do I think that? India is doing that from a point of jealousy. I think she was very careful not to be offensive to him. She said she had love for him. 
and that she and this is the problem with today's culture any form of correction is immediately considered to be coming from a place of hate nobody wants to be held accountable nobody wants to be pushed to a higher standard everybody has this individualized mindset of what they want to do or how they want to do it and that's how they're going to carry themselves anybody try to challenge them to do something different we have uh the advantage and benefit of experience we have been through some things we've seen some things we know how things tend to age and we have the benefit god god thanks to not have had social media when we made our mistakes so there may be some polaroids of some stuff that may be some old vhs camcorder footage but there ain't stuff floating around on the internet yet because they talking about doing some documentaries and stuff and it's a bunch of stuff that's gonna come out some judges some lawyers some a bunch of people are gonna have some explaining to do but these are the same people that are sitting up saying for that very reason cover yourself protect yourself understand that it's cool now it's cute now it's the thing now but it ages and it does everything that's cool doesn't age well and we have to be wise enough to know also that people are benefiting off of what we consider just to be culture and fun. They're benefiting off of it because they're selling it as an image. Now, the crazy thing is nobody is ass out, dumb, wild and crazy as those people, especially the women. So but they'll sell it as we're the uncivilized ones. And again, this isn't me trying to interrupt fun. This is me saying we've got to get a context on this thing. We've got to, number one, uh, this is a person that comes from a, fam, uh, a, a musical family. So my whole thing is I want the artistry back. I want a person to have to have skills, whether it's in rapping, whether it's in uh, vocal, being a vocalist, whether it's being a writer, uh, I want some more composition. Now, don't get me wrong. I love the beats. I love uh, pr the production. But I, I, I want more music. I want to get back to where there was a skill set. Somebody that we talk about and we love and we, we praise. We don't realize how gifted he was. The Prince played 27 music, music in musical instruments fluently. Has been considered by some of the best guitar players on the planet to have been the best. And I happen to agree. That's mastery. Nobody's pushing for mastery anymore. Man, when, I'm telling you now, when Tank and Joe, them cats roll out, we in trouble. Man, I think about the 80s. Man, you had Luther, you had Freddie Jackson, you had Glenn Jones, you had uh, Peebo Bryson, you had Johnny Gill. You had, I just go on and on. And then towards the end of the 80s, you had Aaron Hall. You had all these guys who had vocal skills that challenged the, 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 the ranges and did all this. And now... Everybody sounds the same. There's no unique style, especially in hip hop. Every freaking record sounds the damn same. Man, when I was coming up in hip hop, not only the voice was different, y'all found a way to make your voices sound alike, but not only the voices were different, the cadence was different, the flow was different, the timing was different, the delivery was different. Every song was a different style. Now everybody's the same. Everybody started copying off of that 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 flow from Wayne into Drake, and then it just came out. And nobody, everybody started copying it because it was hot. And so everybody bit on it because it sounded like what was hot. And then so everybody started doing it, and we lost our ability to be innovative, creative, and unique. So that's all I'm gonna say about that. Now on to this Kiki Palmer thing. Again, young woman just had a kid snatched back like crazy and this is like a daughter to me i've watched this little girl grow up she's you know she's a young kid i don't know how old but she's young uh maybe late 20s something like that but anyway young younger than my oldest daughter uh, but 
you know, she has a kid, she's got a boyfriend, and from what I understand, they have a family environment, so it's not a baby daddy, but that's what, of course, they want to parade that damn word, which I hate, that phrase, which I hate, like a, like a, with a passion, but baby daddy, from what I understand, they literally have a family environment, they are in a home environment, they're raising their child, now, here, here's where it gets tricky, because we've been programmed to be highly individualized and, and 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 the first thing I want to say nobody has a right to tell me anything especially if this person isn't my spouse but even my spouse doesn't have a right to tell me what I can and can't do nobody can tell you what you can and can't do but your spouse should definitely have a right to have an opinion about how you're representing them because you are representing them now I don't know their relationship I can't speak on this dude I'm not going to cap for him as a person but I am going to speak to the principle of this Ladies, you guys have been so programmed to feel like it's just about you and the hell with black men that you're ignoring the ones who want to be around, the ones who are trying to be fathers, the ones who are trying to be lovers, the ones who are trying to, the ones who are trying to be husbands. You're just dismissing them. You're pushing them to the side. You're sitting up and saying they don't have value in your life the moment you tell them their opinion doesn't matter. Now, I'm not saying she said that everybody else is jumping to her defense. I haven't heard her response. I read what he said, and he had a valid point. I'm going to tell you now, no man wants his woman seen. And that's the problem with today's culture is there's nothing left to the imagination. Every man sees what you got in totality. There's nothing left to the imagination. There's nothing out there that you hold dear that's just you and your you and hers. It's everybody sees it, and then you're sitting up there and saying, and don't get me wrong, every woman has her celebrity crush. Everyone has her celebrity crush. And uh a bunch of them are fans of Usher. And if it ain't Usher, it's The Rock. If it ain't The Rock, it's Chris Brown. And you can go on and down the line, Denzel. And everybody. So everybody has their crush. And, you know, you, you act differently around your crush. I don't know if that was a crush thing or it's just, hey, I'm happy. I'm, I done dropped this baby. I, I'm, I'm excited. I'm back. I'm doing my thing. I want the world to know I'm here type thing, or, you know, or whatever. But I watched, well, I didn't watch uh, the video. I saw some steel shots. And the way Usher was looking at her and like, okay, this outfit, let's be clear. I don't care about form fitting. You wear something form fitting, that's your thing. I do care about something when I can see your ass cheek and it's supposed to be addressed. Now, if you're at the pool and you're in the thong thing, okay, that's you if you want to do that. Again, context, places you do it places you don't because a thong at the pool doesn't say the same thing as your ass showing through a dress in a public environment outside of a place where skin is expected to be shown and it's and it's all interpretation but it's context and we have to learn and uh flow how to operate because there's a way i want to i want to represent my companion when i when i have one uh, there's a way that I am. Well, anytime that I've been, I'm going to represent you in a way. There's a way I'm going to represent you. There's a way that I'm going to uh, carry myself. There's a way I'm going to move. Even in the way I talk to other women. So, in the same sense, I want to be able to know I can ask you to respect me. Because here's the thing. As a man. You and everybody's talking about he's insecure. No, a man does. Men are naturally territorial, and it doesn't mean ownership. Save all the bullshit. It doesn't mean ownership. It means that we patrol what we cover, and we don't want anyone that doesn't belong in there in there. And so when you start to move up and dance on and rub on and you have dressed, that's not going to flow well. Plus. We're going to hear about that from any dude we know because it's floating around the Internet. This isn't 1978. This isn't 1988 or even 98. This is 2023 where everything goes viral. And so now everybody, dude, what was up with that? And if you think it's nothing wrong with that, 
that's how far we've gotten that we can literally let her, and, and if you think it's okay that your man is up grinding on somebody half dressed is okay it's a problem because that should be a level of respect between us that's it now here's the thing if you want to dance and go up there and dress like that you don't need to be in a relationship and you've got and then people who are sitting up saying that maybe he's not marriage material well then you shouldn't have had a kid with him now again not judging her if that's the case but it doesn't seem like it seems like she's really into the dude but again youthfulness says certain things do your thing dance have fun but there's got to be a line where and my thing is anybody that doesn't believe there has to be a line i don't even want you watching my shit so then everybody else that's left if there is a line what do we draw it i'd love to hear your comments if you disagree with me where do we draw the line what do we set up and say okay we, if you're in a, a commit, committed relationship, you don't do this. And I do. I, I do agree that there are certain benefits that belong to husbands that don't belong to boyfriends. But I think every man deserves to be respected by his significant other and represented correctly and properly by his uh, significant other because he's going to be expected to do the same thing. I'm not talking about one side in this. I'm not talking about I control. I don't control you, but I want you to represent me with the same love, honor, and respect that I'm going to represent you. So, again, if she's, you know, if she's declaring herself single, then they need to have a conversation. But if she's declaring herself in a committed relationship, marriage or not, they need to have an understanding of what's acceptable. And obviously they didn't or he made his opinion felt and she ignored it. And then she, then that comes the conversation. If he won't marry her, that goes your reason why. Writings on the wall. What I'm going to tell you, man, we want y'all to be freaky. We want y'all to be very, very, but we want that shit to ourselves. We want you to be motherfucking Teresa when you're out in public. Have some fun, have a couple of drinks, whatever. But we don't want your sexuality pouring out of you in front of other men. Now, y'all hanging out with y'all girls and y'all at a girls' night doing a waiting to exhale moment. Have at it. Or even at a bachelorette party where you got a stripper. Ain't nothing but y'all women in there and the stripper. Have at it. But when you but you better be careful about the video because that shit comes out. And people at the place don't necessarily care about you and will catch you in a very compromising position and put you on blast for the sole purpose of screwing up your relationship. All of these things. Now, this is an open stage. It was live. It was having fun. And to me, uh, I think there's a way that any woman who has a man dances with another man. Dance with him. You know, you have a dance. But there's a way you dance with a man when you got a man that is different than you can dance with one when you don't. And there has to be these understandings, this level of respect of understanding how each other thinks and are built instead of maligning no it's not insecure it's i don't want my woman up on another dude half dressed not insecure should i know who i am but i i don't want my woman dancing up on a dude half dressed and the crazy thing is as wild as my life has been i've never had it not where i saw it I don't know what happened when, you know, somebody's going out without me, but not while I saw it, not while I'm there or where I can see it. That's got, that's got to be a level of respect. And I mean, from both sides, that's the way I carry myself in my marriage. So that's my take on it. I'm going to back off of it. I'm done. But I tell you what. We've got a long way to go if this is the kind of conversations we've got to have. We got backlash because men are saying, I want you to carry yourself like a lady and represent me. 
and backlash was when, when when someone who has eldership and seniority in a profession says, "Hey, I'm not looking at that." Now I wonder, Patty, or uh, you know, someone else would have came out and said it would have would it have been taken different. I don't know. Y'all mad at Patty now for some reason. I don't know what the hell Patty did. But y'all mad at Patty. But uh so, so ain't nobody safe. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Nobody's safe. Everybody says something and you get canceled. I mean, I and my thing is again, I love Kiki. Like I said, I'm like like you know, she's like a daughter. I watched her grow up. Um uh, I love Janelle Monet. Uh, I'm actually kind of happy for her that she's kind of coming out of her her shell because you know she was covered up from all the time and and not there was no sexuality sold in her music initially and she's coming out and she's being more open and I don't necessarily see anything wrong with that I don't know what the fuck happened at Essence but it set some people off because uh, NDRE isn't the only person I heard um, and I think that you're gonna have generational clashes too uh like i said I, I i'm not the one i don't gaslight my kids like we ain't never did nothing no we did it but be careful because this shit comes back on you we did it you know like i said but my thing is millie jackson was the escape not the main thing man we had we had uh shaka khan and and all of that going on during the same time Millie Jackson's doing her thing. We got all these other bands doing their thing. And so, you know, Cheryl Lynn and all these these other 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 uh female artists that are doing their thing and it's just vocals. And so my thing is be careful and ask yourself. How will this age? On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have a great day.